You take a B-25 Mitchell out for a spin over the Grand Canyon, and you have an engine failure with a VIP head of state aboard. What do you do? Well, let's find out in the hangar. Welcome to In the Hangar. I'm Dan Milliken. And I'm Christy Wong. This episode is sponsored by Gold Seal and iFly GPS. Dan, what do we have today? Okay, well, can you imagine? You're flying a World War II bomber, a B-25 Mitchell, and you're, you're carrying a head of state aboard your plane for a sightseeing over the Grand Canyon, and you lose an engine. Can you imagine? I mean... I just keep flying, but <laughs> well, we have the guy who did that, Scott Purdue. You come back to our channel. Thank you for coming back. Well, thanks, thanks for having me back. And frankly, Chrissy, that's what I did. Just okay, well, it, there you go. Uh, so, case and now, closed, so end of story. thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time <laughs> on. <laughs> no, no. Um, so, Scott, tell us the story. Uh, set us all up, and we're just gonna we're just gonna listen. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, got some coffee? Yeah. Ready, ready to go? Okay. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good to go. All right. <laughs> well, uh, it was uh, one of these living history programs, and we had uh, we had some important guy with uh, his entourage on board, and we were going to go fly over the Grand Canyon. Easy, easy peasy trip. And as we're flying, before we actually got very far over the Grand Canyon, uh, the right engine started uh, backfiring. So I said, uh, we have to go back because the backfiring is no good. So we turn, as we turn back, the engine starts backfiring more and more and more. I'm pulling the throttle back to see where it would run. And eventually I'm at idle and it was running, but man, backfiring every now and again, but it was more or less running. So I left it there. And uh, we were over Lake Mead now and I ended up declaring an emergency with the controller and uh, he, the approach controller and he didn't really want to talk to me. Uh, <laughs> you know. Really, I mean, you, you, you declare emergency and the, and the you, you, everything I've ever seen, heard, look at vast aviation or any of those uh, things, the controller, you know, how can we assist you? What are your, what are your intentions? You know, that's what I expected. Wow. Because I've had emergencies before. I've, I've been treated really well by uh, yeah. air traffic controllers. And I, that's what my expectation was. So I was a little bit shocked. <laughs> by and this. this particular controller was just like, eh. Yeah, he was like, I'm busy. You know, you're getting in my way. And he told me to descend. And I go, okay, well. Descend. You're descend. on one engine and <laughs> altitude is like a lifeline. Yeah, and I'm, that's exactly what it is. And I'm, I'm over Lake Mead and, you know, there's pretty good mountains. They're essentially mountains over here on the left on the south of me. And I'm going up the lake this way towards Vegas. And there's some more mountains over here. So actually I'm going over in kind of a pass. So I accept it, you know, and, and that was, frankly, when I think about it later on, that was a mistake. I shouldn't have said, right. nope, I'm staying right where I am. Unable. But what happened was, is I did, I descended down and that cut any options I had really to the only option in my mind, what I was going to do. And uh, that was to go to McCarran. And he, uh, he says, well, state your intentions. I says, I'm going to McCarran. He says, no, you're not. Go somewhere else. <laughs> oh, my God. And gosh. you declared an emergency. I said, yeah. I said, I'm an emergency. I'm going to McCarran. He says, no, you're not. Go to Boulder. And I said, well, you stepped me down, and I can't go to Boulder now anyway. I didn't want to go to Boulder. Did you tell him all that? Yeah, I told him that. You already wow. stepped me down. I'm, I'm not you going to You already stepped Boulder. me down. I can't. I didn't want to go to Boulder anyway because, relatively speaking, for a heavy B-25 with 10 people on board, single engine, there's no support there. There's no crash crew. You know, it's not a long runway. You know, that's not where I wanted to be because if I did and had screwed up and had a problem, well, you know things might not work out very well. <laughs> I wanted a big airport with crash crew. So um, I didn't even have a choice of going to Nellis because I'm going through that pass and uh, there's a mountain there. We call it Mount Sunrise. I think that's Sunrise the actual name mountain. of it. Mm -hmm. and yeah, so you're from I'm Vegas. from Las Vegas. Are you really? Yeah. Because uh, uh, I remember Nellis being Nellis so much and watching the sun come over that mountain. So that's what we always call it. But So it's mm -hmm. good to hear that it's actually its real name. And uh, I couldn't go to North Las Vegas because they're landing south, and that would have been further with a turn. Well, McCarran was going to be way closer anyway. McCarran's closer anyway. Yeah. Straight in, it's... Yeah, and, and when I looked at it later, the, the winds would have more favored going to 2-6, but that wasn't in my mind. I'm here, and I'm going to go to 1-9. And you got a long pavement. 
Yeah, and I got a long pavement. It's just a slight left turn, and I'm on one nine. So that was in my mind. And uh, we got into a bit of an argument. He says, you need to go somewhere else. What you, you know, you need to go somewhere else. I said, nope. I'm going to McCarran. I'm going to land on one nine right. Oh, my goodness. So eventually, uh, he, he grudgingly accepted that. And uh, by that time, as I'm turning onto one nine, uh, turn lining up for my final, the engine's running so bad, I had to shut it down. Wow. Uh, back to that controller for a yeah. minute. Um, I mean, at any point, did you feel the need to say, you, you know I did declare an emergency. Did you ever have to say that again to him or? Uh, no, I don't remember. Passively, I said that, but I don't remember saying that. What I said was, is I'm going to McCarran and I'm landing on one nine. I guess my question is, was he crystal clear you were in an emergency? He, I, I said it several times. Okay. Did you ask to speak to the manager? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, all I wanted at that point was I want to keep my speed up, you yeah. know, make the turn, and, uh, and, and handle this, you know. And, and that to me was just a distraction. Right, of course. Yeah. So uh, I set up on 1-9, and then they didn't want me to land on 1-9 right. And after all that argument I had with the guy, I acquiesced, okay? They wanted me to land on the left. I said, you know I'm going to close the runway. And he said, you got it to land on 1-9 left. So okay. I said, okay, great. Now, I made a mistake, and, uh, and I'm, I'll admit it. And this, I probably shouldn't have stepped down. And as I set up for this, I've done, I've done plenty of engine out practice in the B-25. And uh, uh, I've flown the DC-3 a little bit, so I've flown some big twins, you know. And uh, so I set, it up, set up the uh, approach and everything just like normal, but I've always had an engine. Mm. At that point, I actually had another failure in a three, but uh, and I've already had an engine. And what I didn't realize was when I pull the power off and I'm getting ready to, to land, crosswind takes a bigger effect, and now I'm limited in flight control. Mm. And that's what happened to me. I didn't account for that. I'm shooting for the center line, and when I start pulling power back, I run out of flight control, and the winds are pushing me to the left of one nine left, and I go, well, there's not a damn thing I can do about it because, you're, you know, when you're below 300 feet in a B-25, you're pretty much committed to land. So that's hopefully I won't go off the runway. And I ended up landing with the left tire right on the edge of the runway, and then I brought it back to the center. Wow. And uh, it, so I didn't depart, uh, but that was not a very comfortable few, a few seconds. And then I exited the runway on a high speed, and I stopped. And I shut the runway down because you don't taxi a B-25 uh, with single engine because it doesn't have any nose gear steering. Oh, you have to do differential. You use differential braking mostly, but then if you have only thrust on one side, all it wants you to do is in a circle. Wow. And the brakes are touchy. Yeah, they're touchy. So there was no real taxiing. So uh, I just stopped, and this is what I'm going to do. And that's my plan had been on one nine right, was I was going to do the same thing, but now I'd be off the whole runway complex on the high speed. I'd be on their taxiway, and that's what I was going to do. But okay, fine, we'll shut it down. So we shut down, done the motor, all one nine shut down, and because uh, we're in the middle, right? And at that point, the sky's entourage is coming down the runway. <laughs> there must have been fifteen cars in this line, and uh, they all show up there. And did you, you you departed McCarran? I did. Okay. Yeah. So they were all there anyway. Yeah. I want to know if anything happened to this controller. Well, a lot of people, and when I did the video on this, a lot of people have asked that question. And uh, frankly, I never, it was the farthest never thing from my up. mind. Yeah, it's like, you know. And that, you don't care. I don't really care. Oh, see, I would have been eaten up by that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would have cared. I want to see that he got his due. <laughs> well, what I was concerned about was we got to find the problem. We got to fix the problem. Because now the airplane's broken. Right. And we have... All these people, we got to get back to Texas and all this stuff. So my mind was on other things, and that's that's what I dealt. With. I understand. Yeah. So to wrap the story up, though, mm -hmm. um, we got the airplane fixed, and we ended up having to change two cylinders and some other things, and uh, then um, we took it to Oshkosh. Hmm. And when I was at Oshkosh, I got a note, and this this probably nearly. Two weeks later, 10, oh, 14 pretty close. days later. Okay. And uh, they said, uh, hey, you need to uh, to tell us why. You know, there's the thing, if you have an emergency, then the, the controller can ask you or the, the manager of that, that facility can ask you for a report. 
Okay. Within 48 hours. Within 48 hours. Yeah. And this was two weeks later. This was two weeks later. Hmm. And uh, so I debated, said, well, it's just going to be a huh. you know, monetize for kids. This is a pissing contest. Right. right yeah. I don't want to get in this. So I'm just going to tell them what happened. I'm just going to be straight and boom, here's what happened. And I told the story in the letter and sent it off and got back a note almost within a day. And it says, Thank you very much. Case closed. See you okay. later. So it was from ATC. It wasn't from the FISDO. It was the FISDO in, L in Las Vegas who sent me that. So I think oh, okay. that controller figured, okay, he's going to get after me. Oh. So he, you know, so he got after me instead of ahead of time. I think I, I don't know. That's just speculation on my part. Uh, I'm going to need to ask Matt Wells what's going on here. But it was, well, it wasn't a tower control. It would have been. Um, it would have been the approach controller. Yeah. Um, Okay. Any other repercussions from that? Any, um, you know, what happened? Was there anything else with, with the FAA for, for all that that you had to do? No, because I was well within my rights of being the pilot in command. And uh, I made a command call and I executed it. And fortunately, we landed without incident and everybody survived. So, what about your VIP? Was he? Okay, uh, with the situation <laughs> yeah. afterwards. He'd think of you as a hero, or is it like, I never want to see that guy again? Well, the funny thing is, is uh, the, the, it, they were so excited <laughs> to be, I mean, this was something that was something different. I had, frankly. Oh, they're excited to have the engine out, emergency. Yes. No, yes. Okay. <laughs> because it was yeah. part of the ride. It was Six Flags. For me, yeah. they're, behind, they're, behind the, they're behind the flight deck. I didn't even think about them. I mean, they're not in my. Right. They're not in my consciousness. Yeah. I've, I'm flying the airplane, you know, we're running the checklist. We had to shut the engine down. We run that checklist. We land. And then that's what I was thinking about. And then now the engine's off. We're on the ground. And they were so excited to, about everything jazzed by this that <laughs> they wouldn't leave. We oh, kept, my gosh. Yeah. So we have, they're r r running around the airplane and talking and stuff like that. There must have been. Getting selfies with the bad engine. and <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> okay. For like 30, 40 minutes. Oh, my so gosh. So I am sure uh, way after we had a tow truck there, you know, a tow bar to tow the airplane away. Wow. So, oh, oh, my. I can't believe that they were just excited and happy. I would have been like. Okay, let's you know think about this. But well, the main main guy was a pilot, and his his brother was a pilot too. That's really interesting about that air traffic controller, though. How how crazy! It sounds like it was just a personality thing for that particular controller. Yeah. Um, you I know, think so. as I've gotten a note from another controller who's putting together uh, a uh, training program for controllers, like so, how can you really help pilots? That declare an emergency. What's important to them? So he's using that video now as a, that's good as a as an example. Yeah, that was my question too. That Dan had was, did he really know that it was an emergency? But it sounds like he knew. He was just you know bothered by it. He was bothered by your emergency. How dare you have an engine out? <laughs> that's a, I think you're imposing on my traffic. Yeah, exactly. My plan. I wow. had a flu. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. So that's the takeaway: um, is that in an emergency, you're the pilot in command. Uh, you do whatever you have to to get your plane and your passengers safely to the ground, no matter what ATC says. Most, And I think this is an exception. Most time ATC, as we see, is extremely helpful, whatever we can do to help you. So I would think this is an outlier. I think it's an outlier. But the important point is, and I did another video uh, of the engine out in IMC in an A36 Bonanza, and that controller was very helpful too. But he was telling the guy, like, Okay, do this and descend oh, right. to Too maintain much. this altitude, and then he's telling him to put his gear down. All bad advice, you know. Yeah. So, you need to fly your airplane. This guy's I, the guy. The controller did a great job, but he's telling the guy to do pilot stuff. Mm. The pilot needs to do. So he didn't need that kind of an input. Yeah. So so there's there's a um, a good good balance. Yes. So the controllers are there to just assist in any way, but. They're not there to fly the plane or make decisions. You are the pilot in command in an emergency. You need to make the decisions that you think are best based on data that you get from whatever sources, be it your instruments or be it a controller on the ground. So, Scott, thank you so much for being here with us again. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And you guys, uh, leave us your comments. Have you ever had an experience like that with, uh, with a controller? I'm hoping you never did. And uh, we'd love to see your comments. So please like, share, subscribe. We've loved bringing you these shows. So we'll see you guys next time. In the hangar.
another event in South Carolina where you know, we had a realtor that had a client with a different lending institution and this particular client unfortunately with the company they were with went all the way up until the day of closing and then that company told them that they didn't qualify. Immediately reached out to one of our lead VA underwriters and his interpretation and calculations of the income allowed us to close that loan and we closed that loan in nine days.